Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you haven't already, please subscribe, smash the like button if you find this video helpful. Let's get into it. So in this video, we're going to look at how to budget weekly if you are receiving a bi-weekly paycheck. So that means you get paid two times for the month, more months than others. And I think there's some months in which you'll get um, three paychecks. I think that happens maybe twice for the year. I am on a bi-weekly paycheck, so I will use my um, numbers, well, somewhat of my numbers here in this example to help you guys um, get this budget and thing on the way. So the first thing you want to do is set up all your income sources. Well, first thing you want to put in the month. Let me move this recording thing out the way so I can see oh no I can't okay there it is I got it okay so it says October 2018 it's all the way shifted to the left because to the right because the spreadsheet is actually a lot wider but we're just going to focus on what's on the screen right now then later on in the video I'll show you the other categories so the first thing you want to do is set up your income sources like I said before so here you just put your income. What do you expect your income to be for week one? Now, remember, in this example, this person gets paid bi-weekly. So, for me, in October, I get paid on the 5th of October and also on the um, 19th. So, in week one, I will receive a payment because the 5th falls in between the 1st and the 7th of October. So, I estimate that to be about $1,000. And then, my beginning balance is normally around $50.00. So I put $50 there. If you are doing the zero based budget, then your beginning balance would be zero. If you're expecting other income between the 1st of October until the 7th of October, you place it in there. If you're expecting it some other time in October, depending on when you're expecting it, you place it in its respective um, budget for the week. If you're not sure when you're supposed to get it, I would suggest put it towards the middle. So either in week two or week three, around there, I'll put it in there. And if you get it before, then you can just budget accordingly. Let's get back into week one. So our income has been budgeted for it. Now your expenses. What you want to do is write down what your expenses are. And if you have debt, when are those bills due? If you're using a credit card, I'm not opposed to using a credit card as long as you're using it responsibly. That's what's most important. I am a little bit on little weather. I think it's allergies, so forgive me if you hear me sniffle every now and then. So when you're setting up your expenses, you want to list all of your responsibilities and when are those responsibilities due. So here I put in some dates. Um, most of it's applicable to me. The debt part is not. I do use my credit card and I pay it off before it's due date. I try to pay it off when I get paid in the category that I spent. So let's say I spent $60 in groceries on my credit card, I will pay that $60 off the credit card that I spent as long as I budgeted for it, right? And if I didn't, then I, you know, make adjustments as necessary. So I believe you should pay yourself first. Now, um, in this example, we're going to say that you want to give yourself $300 on weeks that you get paid. So even though you're going week to week, the money you receive is supposed to serve you for two weeks because you're on a bi-weekly pay schedule. So you're not going to get another paycheck for another two weeks. So you have to make it stretch. But to give you more discipline, you're setting it up week to week. So you'll do this before the week begins. So in this example, we're budgeting for October. So the end of September, you should be budgeting for your following week. So if you do put aside a buffer, you will include that there. In this example, we're just going to use $10. You're going to give yourself $10 when you get paid to put aside for a buffer. But you know what? Let's up it a little bit more. Let's make it $30. And the buffer is what I, I, I actually use the buffer. And for, so it's like different stages. Before I touch my emergency fund, I will go to my buffer. Ideally, I would have $1,000 in my buffer. And if you follow Dave Ramsey, then you know he says have a $1,000 emergency fund when you're getting out of debt. You don't have to have that. It really depends on your 
what your situation is. I would recommend you have a $1,000 buffer while you're getting out of set and maybe a three to $5,000 um, emergency fund. That's my recommendation, but to each its own. Rent is on the first, so with rent, you want to make sure you're saving one month's rent up in advance. So you want to save up a month's rent in advance. So in September, you should have already saved up the rent for October. And for November, by the end of October, you would have that rent money saved up. So when the first comes around, your rent is due. I mean, you have the money to give it. So for this, rent will be paid out the first of um, the first of the month. So when you get paid on the fifth, that money, like for me, I will get paid on the fifth of October. I'm budgeting to take my rent out. So I take that out, put that to the side. So when November comes around, I have my rent ready to pay for that month. So that's what this is. So you already paid, in this scenario, you already paid October's month. I'm sorry, October's rent already. Because you have that to the side. So technically, if you think about it like that, your beginning balance is probably like 350 So I'm just going to adjust this right here. Because this includes the previous month's rent. Well, the upcoming month's rent, which is October. So 350 So what you're actually doing is this is going to be 600 because 300 is going to go towards October's rent and then another 300 you're going to put to the side for November's rent. So you could take that out, put it in a cash envelope if you follow that or just set it to the side and know not to touch it. Or if you pay your rent from your checking account, like you write a check, you can have a separate account that's just for your rent. So when you get paid, you withdraw 300 or you transfer 300 into your rent account. This way, when you're writing your check to your landlord or what have you, it's coming out of it's being deducted from that account. For groceries for the week, the first week in October, your budget is let's say $60 for the week. Because you should have some food in the house already, like you know, rice and those type of things. Your student loan is due the 15th, and then you're on a plan in which every time you get paid, you contribute $150 towards your student loans. Oh, this is, you guys can't see it. Let me bring it down. You can't see how much is remaining. Oh, I didn't freeze it. Let me freeze it real quick. Oh, I don't think I can because I, um... Okay, good. It works. I wasn't sure. Better. So now we see we have three hundred and sixty dollars left to budget. Remember, this has to last you for two for um two weeks, even though you're budgeting just for this week. So you have your food and your student loan. Back to the student loan. So you said one hundred and fifty dollars every week. No, I'm sorry, one hundred and fifty dollars. Every time you get paid, so that's you could break that up to be um, what is that, 75 $75 a week, or you pay it out, you pay it out as soon as you get paid. That leaves you with a hundred, I'm sorry, $210. And you chase, you're on a similar plan, but you only contribute $50 or a hundred dollars every time you're paid, so that's $200 a month, and your capital. Your capital one credit card is not due until the 27th and you haven't spent and and you're not going to spend anything on it on the first week so you don't have anything um do that day and your holiday sinking fund you want to put aside $25 a week so now you have $85 that $85 left to be budgeted for should hold you over for the next week so from the 8th of October until the 14th of October that's all you have to budget with. So now week one is happening. So that's a total, I'm sorry, a total of $1,265 that you budgeted for with an income of about $1,350 for week one. Now, week one is happening. The first thing you do, you did, you got paid, right? 
and your paycheck was actually 10 10 and you did have $350 left in your account and the first came around and you paid your rent so now you have 1060 left your buffer instead of putting 30 you decided to put down 15 and your rent um you the oh sorry you did pay out your rent three hundred dollars food you only spent about fifty five dollars on food and you student loan you're following your plan because this gets withdrawn from your account every time you get you get paid and also your cap your chase gets withdrawn every time you get paid so now you have four hundred and forty dollars and then let's say twenty five dollars so now it's $945 that you um, that you spent for week one. So you have $415 to hold you over for week two. That's your actuals. So towards like the 6th or the 7th of the month, you should start, or maybe like between the 5th and the 7th, you should start budgeting for the following week. So you receive your payment. And you can actually put the dates there. When you're receiving your um, income, if you want, like pay, you can put the date here. So for me, it's ten five. I'll put that in there. And let me bring this closer. Okay, you can put something like that if you want. Three fifty. So you have $415 to budget for in this week. Remember, you're putting aside your rent too. So let's say you didn't put it aside here because you didn't. You had said $300 to pay out the previous month for October's rent and then $300 to set aside for November. But you only paid out October's rent in week one. So week two come around, your beginning balance is $415. Right? Because that's what's remaining. You haven't received any income because you get paid bi-weekly. You're not expecting any other income, so you're just going to have $415 to budget. And this is how you do it. Your emergency fund, you already paid it out. You said $300 every time you get paid. You will, um, this is actually just week two. I don't know why. Week. So it should just be equal to that. Okay, good. Now it's good. So you don't have to contribute to your emergency funds. Your buffer, you're going to contribute $15 to your buffer this week. Your rent, you're going to set aside $300 for the next month. Or if you want, you could split it. You're going to set aside $150 this um, week. And then when you get paid again, you'll set aside another $150. So you're splitting it in two. Food this week, you have now you have $250 left to budget. Food this week, you're expecting it to run you about $60 this week. And your student loan, you only pay your student loan when you get paid. So you're not putting any, anything towards your student loan this week for the week of 10 8 to 10 14. Because remember, you pay that out on the 5th. You pay maybe the minimum is $75 and you're trying to get out of that. So you contribute up to $300 a month on this um, particular student loan. For your student loan number two, it's due the 30th. And we're in the week of 10, 8 to 10, 14. So you're not going to put anything towards that. Or you can. It's really up to you. But let's say you want to put down $25. Your Chase credit card is due the 15th. And you don't have any debt on it. So you didn't spend anything on your credit card. So you wouldn't have anything on that. If you are using your credit card, to make your purchases, it's already included in these categories. Let's say you, like for me, I use my credit card for like almost all of my purchases. So let's say you sp you're, you budgeted $60 on food for your, on your credit card. So you don't have to put that here because then you're counting it twice. If you have a particular card that you use for food and another one that you use for gas, 
then you could have those categories there and I wouldn't include the credit card or you could and then put food you could put when it's due or you could put the name of the car like here chase and then put like dash food or something so you know that's for food for your capital one debt you're not gonna um, pay it in this you're not budgeting to pay it off with the money that's left over but you are going to contribute $25 to your sinking fund and miscellaneous you're budgeting, you're budgeting for about $65 for miscellaneous expenses just in case right and this bill is due the 15 but you're not using it. let's say you are using it as you're um using your credit card you should be paying it off so you could put if you put 75 if you put the 60 right look what happens that increases it so it looks like you have more but that's not what's happening that's why I said don't do it because it counts it twice That should be a dollar sign. So this is your budget for week two. Now, as week two is progressing, or as yes, as week two is progressing, you include your expenses as you spend them. Fifteen dollars. You did set aside one hundred and fifty dollars for your rent. Groceries. You know, maybe you spent twenty five dollars, then you went back and you spent the fifteen dollars. So that's the total of forty dollars that week. And if you went back again, you just put the plus sign and add how much you spent. So now I think it's a little bit over. Now that's $65 and you have budgeted $60. But you're okay because you still have $185 left to spend for this week until you get paid. And your student loan, you did contribute $25 towards that. Chase, you're doing pretty good. You didn't have anything with Chase. You're sinking fund, you put $25, and miscellaneous only costs you about, let's say, $35, even though you budgeted for $65. So you're doing good. You still have $100. So now week three is coming. In week three, October, I get paid on the 19th. Now, if you're the opposite of me, you get paid on the 12th and the 26th. You just put those dates in there. So I'm just going to put 10, 19, 18. For me, going to be 10, 15, through 10, did I, put, I said 15 and print 14. Through 10, 29. Or if you want to do it for the rest of the month, can but I will put that in week four so 10 30 to the 31st which is only two days you can include it in here it's really up to you but if you want to say through the 31st you can right and then you could change the colors and all of that later but let's just focus on the budgeting part so we said that your beginning balance is equal to this but you have left over and your income, your budgeting, your income should be about, you have budgeted 10, 1,000, and it was like 10, 10. So you're estimating it to be around the same. But I like to say budget low, so let's say 10, 05, right? And you're not expecting any other income. Emergency, you're getting paid again, you're on this thing to say every time you get paid, you're contributing $300. That's what you're budgeting for, your emergency savings. Your buffer, every time you get paid, you say you want to do $30. So this is a pay week, so you're budgeting that. Your rent, now remember, last week you put down um, 150 for November. So now you're going to set aside another 150 for November to give you your total month rent of 300 this week it's two extra days so you're expected maybe about so you look when in week one you have budgeted for sixty dollars and you spent 55 in week two you have budgeted for sixty dollars and you spent 65 
So in week three, budget for $65, or you know what, do $70 for those two extra days. And let's see how you how you fare. Your student loan, you paid that off, and you it's due the 15th of the month, and you try to pay it off towards the beginning of the month, right? The minimum balance, let's say $75. But you also told yourself every time you get paid, you're contributing $150 towards that student loan. And also, I'm going to skip right here to your Chase credit card. You said, um, is this it? No. Where's the other student loan? Student loan number two is due to 30th, and you get paid on the 19th. And this student loan, let's say, is about 150 as well. Because you did $25, you gave, you paid off $25 last week. Are you guys following? I hope this makes sense. It, it's better as you're doing it. When this actually happened, it's a little bit easier to track it. But because it's a scenario, just bear with me. Chase, you, you notice I'm going back, right? I'm looking back to see what happened week to week and what do I owe. You don't owe anything on Capital One because you're just, maybe you're using cash. If you're using your credit card, you're paying it off as you're using it. And your holiday thinking, So now you have $230 left to budget for. How do you want to budget that money? You make sure all of your immediate responses are uh, immediate responsibilities are taken care of. Maybe you have a Chase credit card. Um, if you have a credit card debt, then you set your payments as I. Set your payment size similarly to what you're doing for like your student loan one or your student loan two. Let's say this was um uh yes, yeah. let's say this is credit card debt right here. Credit card capital one debt, right? And this is just a regular credit card that you have. Let's say you have credit card debt on this one. So we didn't budget it anything for it, it there. And let's say you, well if you had said that every time you get paid, you want to put $50 towards it. This is what it will look like. $50 budgeted. Now, you see how this number changes? That decreases it by $35. And this becomes $50. And then this. That's why I like my equal sign. This is what you have to budget. There, making it better. This changes it. So now, 50 there. You said every time you get paid, you want to contribute $50 towards that. And you do. So you get paid again in week three, and you're going to contribute maybe not 50 this time, but you said, you know what? I'm contributing 150. Or 100. Really up to you. Let's do 100. And for miscellaneous, you're going to have, you had originally budgeted for 65 and you only spent 35 so just put 30 there. And there you have it. So you received 1055 and you budgeted for 1005 Well, your total income for week three was that. And now as week three progress, or from 1015 up until 31st progresses, you enter and so you get paid on the 19th and it turns out you were right you got 1005 this time and your beginning balance was $50 so that gives you 1055 so you budgeted correctly or on point
for your income side of the house. Now your expenses. You said every time you get paid, you're going to contribute 300 towards the emergency fund. And your buffer, you only contribute $15 to your buffer. Your rent, um, you're putting aside that $150 for November, the next month. And your food, you're doing pretty well. You only spent $50 on food that week. Some items were on sale and you only needed a couple of things. That's why that one is less. Maybe it's $100. You know what? Maybe it could have been. Let's put $100 there. Okay. And your student loan, you're keeping with it, $150. These are set up automatically. So as soon as you get paid, your emergency savings is deducted and your student loan payments are deducted. So $450 is coming out of your paycheck before you get the money. Like before it hits your account, well, it hits your account and it gets taken out automatically. Before you have an opportunity to withdraw or make any purchases, is being taken out. Student loan number two is due the 30th, so you have to pay that off. 150. And Chase is good. You pay that off already in the beginning of the month. And your Capital One credit card debt, $100, you budget that for. Now you have $90 left. Miscellaneous was pretty good. You only end up spending $15 on miscellaneous and your sinking fund, you were able to contribute $25. And now you have $50 left over. Nothing to report on week four because we included the last two days of October in this, um, in week three. 